Hi, Mark Jager here, jagerphoto.com. What we're going to do today is take this gear, which is the Kessler shuttle pod and the second shooter plus controller. We will assemble it. We will then make some manual moves just to make sure that it's working properly. And then we'll do some programmed moves. It looks like a daunting amount of equipment, but actually the assembly is really easy. Stay tuned, you'll see. Now, maybe you're already a subscriber to this channel, but if you're not, look down in the lower right hand corner of your screen, you'll see the subscribe button. Hit that, go through the process, and I'd appreciate it. Now, there's one other thing. There are links in the section below the description of this video. Those links take you to B&H. You can either just browse or you can buy the equipment. Okay, let's get started with some real basics. This is a battery uh, powered uh, device. This is the battery. It's called a mag pack. These are magnets that affix to the motor unit so everything stays together. There's no mechanical fastening. There is, if you turn the battery on, right here there's an on-off switch and you see a red light. There is a button right here that you can push that will show you that there is a full charge on this battery. Hopefully you can see that as I press this. You see one red light and three green lights. Now, to charge the battery, many times on a lot of devices it's not uh, necessary, but in this case you need to plug in the battery charger to power and then turn the battery on. When you do that, the charging cycle will complete and at the moment this battery is fully charged so it shows green already but if it were charging it would show orange and then when the charge was complete it would show green. The whole point of showing you this up front is put your battery on the charger when you get the equipment by the time you're assembled you'll at least have a reasonable charge on the battery and you'll be ready to go. Now, the Kessler shuttle pod uses these three quarter inch by one and a half inch aluminum rails and the lengths are all four foot. If you want to go to something longer than four feet they have these bars that slide into the uh, rail. You grab the uh, quarter 20 thumb screws and fasten that just a little bit. Slide it into this side here and go ahead and tighten this a little bit. Now, if you want to end up supporting this in the middle instead of at the ends of the tracks that you'll see, there is this crossbar. And you'll notice here that there is a circular machined spot and a slot. Basically, you slide this in, go ahead, fasten the thumb screws down the rest of the way. And now, in case you haven't thought of it, this is the bottom. But if you put it the other way around, then if you put it like this, then the slots are trying to come out from the screw, from out from under, under the screws, and it's less secure. Now we're not going to use a long length today, but I wanted to start by showing you how to assemble track sections. When you receive the package with the shuttle pod, presumably you bought the all-terrain feet. 
That comes in what they call their MOCO kit. MOCO short for motion control. If you undo the two clamps, then the feet can be deployed. You can go ahead and tighten them up. And the other side comes around, make it roughly symmetric and you can tighten it up as I said. Now, once we're in this position, you can see that there are a slot here and a slot there that will be the fixing point for the bars. Go ahead, take a bar, stick it through, leave it extending out something on the inch to inch and a half range and repeat over here. <laughs> if you're thin you can do that. I'm not so thin so go ahead stick it through here and tighten these thumb wheels and one side is complete. Now, we'll just stick that right about there and let this other side go down a moment. Now the other side here is basically including a low profile ball mount that you can get from Kessler and this is a tripod base unit that fits my Manfrotto tripods. If you want, you can leave the feet folded up and attach this to your tripod as a means of supporting the uh, rail. In this case, I'm going to use the feet. Just going to move this one out a tiny bit more. And We'll stick it on here. Now because my table is short here, I'm going to leave a little more of the rail extending. But, of course, you bought this, you'd like to have the maximum travel possible, so normally you'd be at the end. This is the shuttle pod base plate, and you can tell very cleverly this side up. I have started the quarter 20 thumb screws in here because the side brackets go on very easily. You can see that there is a slot right here and two slots right here that the uh, carriage fastens to. Go ahead and just click it in place. The fit up is very nice. Go ahead and firmly secure these. Turn right around and grab the second one, put it in place, and now we have achieved cart. Okay, now that we've got slider, we're going to take a second set of wheels. The keeper grabber wheels and the main cart wheels are identical. However, you can take a link. You see one end is longer than the other. The longer end goes down. You take a thumb screw and put it through the hole and take a T-nut and put it on the back side and screw that together such that it's almost tight. Leave it, leave it loose for now and fasten that in place on the cart. Take another thumb screw and T-nut 
put it on the back side again almost tight and here same same deal and put that together then take your hand tension the whole thing and tighten the four screws go back give them one more little turn and you're good to go now I've already done the back side so we'll spare the video time to repeat that because the back side is identically equal to the front now just for the giggles of it let's put on the motor drive plate and it has two 1032 screws they go into the shuttle pod plate and just that easy things are attached the next step would be to take one of the clamps for the uh, drive belt and fasten it on this end take a second one and fasten it on this end outside of the uh, outrigger feet now take your belt and give it a heave over here and take the cogs down feed it through right above the wheels and feed it up through the spot between the uh, drive wheel the cog wheel and the idler wheel which is smooth and hold it with your fingers so that there are no gaps uh, between the cogs of the belt and the cogs of the drive wheel pull enough through that you can open the clamp here go ahead and snug that up repeat the process on this side where you find a spot where you can get the cogs down into the grooves in the belt loosen the clamp slide it out you can see that we've got slack here just slide it out until the belt is fairly tight at this point you can attach the motor unit the motor unit has two 1032 screws and a drive belt that slips on with the screws like this you slide the belt around the outside raise the motor unit to draw the drive belt tight and tighten the screws next we have what's euphemistically called the cheese plate it is basically a plate that has 3 8 inch and quarter 20 holes drilled in it so that you can attach a variety of equipment go ahead and take the quarter 20 screws there's four of them that uh, hold the cheese plate to the uh, base plate of the shuttle pod go ahead get them all started and run up nearly tight and then go ahead and tighten all of them next because this is a female 3 8 inch thread we're going to take a an adapter that is male male and screw it in and we can then take the pan and tilt head put it on and screw it in place all of this like I say is just more or less plug and play no wrenches screwdrivers whatever this is all hand tools don't worry much about where this stops we'll take care of that with a manual move next we take the battery 
and the battery cable. Right next to the on off switch there is a receptacle for the cable and it basically fastens in place there. The second shooter plus has on one end a light and the slider pan and tilt cat 5 uh, connections. Over on this side we have the power which we will use and it has a USB and expansion ports and that all goes together magnetically. Now to finish up let's take a cat 5 cable go into the slider receptacle on the second shooter plus and hook it up to the motor. Take the next cable plug it into the pan channel and come around and plug it into the pan head. Take the last cable and plug it into the second shooter controller for the tilt and come around and secure it for the tilt. At this point we're ready to go. Okay, let's power on the unit by turning on the battery. And you'll see that the first thing that happens is we get a Kessler second shooter logo. And we're going to select standalone. All selections are made by hitting the enter key. It takes us to the next choices of program move, manual move, turntable, or settings. We're going to scroll down by using the center up and down arrows to manual move and hit enter. We're going to leave the speed at 50%, the ramp at 50%, and we're just going to go down here to start. It goes to running. Now, if we pan, we can go left or right, and you want to be sure that your cables are, are free. But we're going to go around until we get to a good starting position for the pan head, which is the direction of the camera. And the tilt is much as you'd expect, forward and back. And the same with the slider, left and right. We've just verified that the Second Shooter Plus is uh, communicating with the controller and that the battery and motor and all the functions are operational. So, let's do something more interesting. Let's go to hit the menu button twice, up arrow once to program mode, hit enter, select two keyframes, now, we're going to, under manual control, move the slider to a starting position, move the pan to a starting position, and move the tilt. Same story, starting position. Now, maybe this is too radical, but it allows you to see the movement. We then hit enter. That sets the first keyframe. We're now going to manually scrub to another position with the slider, with the tilt head, and the pan. And once we stop the manual move, it will say set second keyframe and we will enter. The next part of the command says loop, scrub, run once, time lapse, or stop motion. We're going to select loop and hit enter. And we're going to see that the time for one cycle is set at 35 seconds. If we 
hit the enter button, it starts blinking. We can down arrow and change that to 30 seconds. Hit enter to, sec to secure it. Have a ramp of 10%. That's the acceleration and deceleration ramping total. So it's going to have a 5% acceleration ramp and a 5% deceleration ramp. We'll cycle down to run. Take the controller, set it up in a nice position up here, out of the way, hit enter, and away we go. It's moving to the first keyframe at this point, which you may recall we set a big tilt and a pan to the left. Now it's going to move and um, the cycle overall will take 30 seconds. So we're going to be roughly 15 seconds when we get to this end and then it's going to reverse and go back to the beginning again. Slow down, now it's ramping back up again and we're heading back towards the settings that we had at the first keyframe. Now this in looping mode will continue until you tell it to stop, which I will do by hitting the enter button and it stops. So you can set three keyframe moves. You can also do time lapse with continuous shooting or move, shoot, move, basically stop and go. You can also do stop motion where you take a frame, move, take a frame, move, take a frame, etc. And all of those subjects have video uh, that explains them pretty well on the KesslerCrane.com website, so I'm not going to repeat the uh, information here. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button at the bottom right hand part of the screen. I appreciate all my subscribers. If you like, you may tunnel down through the affiliate links that are on the uh, description part of the web page, and uh, those will take you to BNH, and you can see what this stuff costs. Of course, you can shop at KelserCrane.com uh, directly. That's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy uh, the tutorial. Uh, I'm going to go out in the field and try and do the Milky Way this evening.